I'm Tronico with Wizardify, and here are seven ways accountants can use Excel macros to save time. So starting with number one, automating data entry tasks. What does this look like? If you're working with Excel, you might find yourself in a situation where you're constantly inputting the same data over and over again, right? So if you're looking at my stream, you're going to see a general ledger here, and maybe a part of your job is to enter routinary information, right? Or you have to type the same type of data all over again, every day. Sometimes it's just a part of the job that we can't get rid of, and that's fine. But does that mean that you have to constantly get your hands dirty and manually type things? The answer is actually no. So we have a really simple example here for tip number one. And instead of having to type data down, you can have a macro that puts that command into a button. And instead of typing the account code 1000 for cash, I could just select it here and press insert code. So it might not seem like much in our example here, but imagine leveraging this type of macro and scaling it to a data set where you have hundreds and thousands of rows of information and you have to input data one row at a time, right? Imagine using a macro to fill out rows at the click of a button. So isn't that really cool? That's just tip number one. So tip number two is about simplifying data cleaning and formatting. When you're working with data, sometimes what happens is that you have data like this and maybe your boss wants you to create a report or to highlight certain items from this. For example, he wants you to make it into a table. And then what he wants you to do is to highlight all of the items that are above a hundred thousand, right? So you have to put greater than, and then highlight all of the items that are greater than a hundred thousand. And he wants you to highlight items that are less than 10,000. So you have to do the same process here and change the color to green maybe. If you have to do this over and over again, it really becomes boring. And one of the things that you might ask yourself is, why do I have to do this over and over? And the answer is, you don't. So if I go to this tab with the same data from a while ago, I actually have a script to show you and it's called tip two, right? So I made this script. Now I press run and I get the same results at the click of a button. So that was tip two. It's not just automating data entry tasks that you can do, but you can also do that with data cleaning and formatting. And tip number three might knock you off your socks because you can even automate the generation of financial reports in a single click. Is that really something that we can do? The answer is actually yes. If you have data that you need in a certain format, that's something that you can run through a script too. So as you can see, I have journal entries here that I need to summarize and turn into the financial statements. I have a small sample here for you. I use the balance sheet as an example, and I actually have a script for this, tip three. I press run and automatically the balance sheet is formatted for me, right? And I don't have to go through tons of processing just to say, hey, my assets and my liabilities and owner equity, they don't add up, right? Imagine how much time you just saved so that you can focus on the good stuff. So that's tip number three. We can do that for our financial reports. We can even do that to speed up repetitive calculations. No matter how complex they may be, as long as it's something that you can standardize. So if we go here to tip number four, now, if I needed to summarize the debit and credit here, so a simple explanation or a simple example would be me doing the sum function down here. And maybe my boss doesn't want that. He wants me to put that in a separate table to the right. So debit, credit, and then do that same thing. Right. And you know, this is something that you can run to another script. I have tip number four here. Instead of doing all of that, I could just run this, get that done in a second. So now if we're talking about speeding up repetitive calculations, something that might be interesting to you 
is that you can also use macros to process data from multiple sheets or files. So it's not just multiple sheets that we're talking about here, but if you have files in a folder that you need to consolidate, that's something that Excel can do as well. So I'm going to go over here to tip number five. And what's our goal? So our goal is to combine file one and file two, right? This is a very simple example, but I want to give you the assurance that this does scale. You can do this for multiple worksheets or files that have hundreds and thousands of rows of data, as long as the row count, when all of the files are combined, doesn't exceed the maximum amount for Excel. So in this example, we have file one with five transactions. It has a transaction ID and an amount. And I also have file two. File two is practically the same structure. We have the transaction ID and the amount and the rest of the transactions are over here. Let's say that I need to combine these two. What people would usually do is copy paste that into one sheet, but I don't want to do that. I want to save time. That's the essence of this video. So what do I do? I open up my macro that combines the files for me and I simply click run. And as you can see, those two files have been combined. So that's a really neat trick. The next thing that you can do is to automate pivot table creation and formatting. You might be wondering, do these macros or scripts only work when I'm dealing with cells over here and putting in formulas? The answer is no. So don't worry about macros or scripts not working with pivot tables because they do, right? And our final tip for you is that you can also use macros to do your testing, right? To prepare data for audit and compliance checks. Now this one is really cool. And if you're doing something like an internal audit or something like that, one thing that you might be doing is checking the quality of the data, right? So for example, if we're working with journal entries here, one of the things that you might want to check for is, hey, do I have values in both the debit and the credit for one entry? Because definitely that's not something that you want to see. Or another thing that you want to avoid seeing is both the debit and the credit having zero, right? Or not containing anything at all. So that's definitely something that we need to raise. So you want to check if debit is or credit is zero. And you want to check if debit is also zero. And you put your marker. So if it's good... Or if it's a scenario that you don't want to see, you have to put for checking. If it's a scenario that's okay with you, you just put clear, right? And this is something that you can format later on or something that you can filter later on to highlight the items that don't really conform to what we want to see. So if you can see, we used a formula there. This is actually relatively simple to some of the checkings that auditors do. And, you know, it takes time to build those formulas. But if you know that you're doing those formulas often, again, you can delegate all of this to Excel. So if I get rid of this column, do I have to worry about putting that formula in again? Absolutely not. Because again, I have a script for it. And once I press run right here, there you go. It does the formulas for me. So that's... Something that's really cool about Excel again. And I hope all of these tips have shown how much faster you can be just by leveraging macros in Excel. Those seconds add up. All right. So again, this is Franco with Wizdefy. And this was seven ways accountants can use Excel macros to save time.